everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about airbrushing miniatures from start to finish and having a great time doing it. And this is part 19. I can't believe we're already at part 19. Glowing orb, where I show you how to do a glowing resurrection orb for Necrons. Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you how to use your airbrush effectively and have a great time doing it. Basically, your airbrush is your best friend and I'm teaching you how to be friends with it. So yeah, and today is another OSL tutorial. It's gonna be OSL glowing orb. So how to do a glowing orb on a Necron um, who's holding it out and how to do it, uh, you know, this is a relatively uh, cleaner OSL than the last one, which I kind of want to look crazy with, but you can do as much or as little as you want. That's the key. So in this one, like if you wanted to, you can cover an entire Necron side if it was a giant glowing orb, you know, it was a really bright orb. But for this one, I'm just going to go a little bit more uh, realistic of a brightness. Um, and the key is when doing orbs, number one, do a lot of colors. The more colors you bring in, the more intermediate colors, the better it will look. Second, start with the orb. As always, start with the source of the light and then work your way up towards the effects of the light. So I always do the orb first and then work my way down the arm. And then each step, I'm going less and less further away from the orb because it's brighter. We're going from darkest to brightest. And at the end, I hit the orb with the lightest color possible, usually either a white or a very bright yellow. So in this case, I'll use flash gets yellow. Um, or you can use like the bright yellow from Minotaur, for example. Just a very bright yellow at the very end. And that's basically it. It's not a too hard. In fact, also what I like to do is I like to keep the orb, like this is the orb, I airbrush over the orb. So I parallel, like I perfectly match the parallelness and then I go over the orb and that way I, the light is acting like a light source with the, uh, the paint. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and paint a Necron Lord with a glowing orb. Hey everyone, welcome to the next part. Um, so today we'll be, as I said, using a an airbrush, of course, because it's Airbrush 101, to produce a glowing effect, a glowing orb going this way. And as I mentioned in my previous OSL tutorial, and probably in the intro, um, the key is to start with the object itself, and then we're going to start with the effect furthest away, and then we'll work our way inwards. The key, though, is you basically gotta go in reverse, because you gotta start with the object, and then you gotta go over the object with an airbrush, this. And you can go as crazy as you want. I know some people, which would, the orb would be so bright, it could do like this half of the body, and you can do that if you want. For this effect today, I'm going to go less crazy as I did in my plasma gun tutorial. I'm going to focus maybe on the top, the shoulder pads onwards. I know he could make it so bright that his entire like sort, like you make it, this entire half his body is lit up. Uh, we won't be doing that today. Just about here onwards. So we're going to start off with uh, the orb, and then the same color scheme. You know shoulder pad onwards. Uh, maybe a little bit over here, we'll see. I haven't figured out how crazy it's going. I'm using a combination of colors today. I'm using dark green from Minotaur, which is identical to the um, Taliban green, just because it's ready to go. And then I'll be using Warpstone Glow, Moot Green, and then a combination of Moot Green and Flash Gets Yellow. So as I said, the more colors you put into this, the kind of the better the effect it happens. And I will be using my handy dandy Sotar 2020 today because of the just the size of the model I want a nice precision I'm gonna use my Sotar 2020 if you're using a badger page 105 you may want to drop down the PSI maybe into the, the mid teens and uh, that should work fine for you as well but uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun so let's go ahead and put our paint in our uh, palettes and uh, get going and as always I'm using a glove as you can see and I will be using my mask always protect your lungs always protect your hands so I started off with dark green, which is equivalent to Caliban green, dark green from Minotaur. And as I said, I focused on first getting the uh, the orb itself done entirely. And once I was happy with the orb and the darkness of the orb, I then focused on the hand. And then uh, the key is then I just turned the model around and from a parallel angle, I basically moved my airbrush on top of the orb as you can see here. And I focused on the arm, all the way down the arm until about the shoulder pads. And that's defining the edges of this OSL effect. If you want to go brighter, you can do it all the way to the face and the chest. I also did a little bit around the chest as well, but you can do as much or as little as you want in this first step, which defines the entire OSL. So, as you can see, we focus a little bit on the body, just a little around there to produce some light. And what I did was I basically lined up my airbrush parallel and right over it so that it was perfectly reflecting the light. There you go. So it's on the other side too. So now I'm going to go with each color. I'm not going to stop in between takes now. I'm just going to go with each color now and go uh, start with the light source, 
of course, and, uh, and then work my way outwards again. And I will be pretty much covering almost the entire light source and by the hand with the final color. It's going to be very bright, and then the body onwards continue. And then once you step, you're going closer and closer to the hand. So let's keep going. So now I repeated this process with Warp Stone Glow, um, but with Warp Stone Glow, once again, I focused, uh, with each step, I'm gonna work my way up the the orb, basically doing like a Zenithal highlight on the orb. So we're going upwards and towards the face, like the towards the center part of the orb. And then with each step once that's done, I work my way down the arm towards the shoulder pad again, stopping uh, closer to the orb than I did the previous step. And that's essentially the key to do OSL. As I said, you do the object itself, and then work your way away from the object um, and finishing closer to the object each step. I'm using my Sotar 2020 just because it's a nice, precise airbrush. I could do this with my Patriot 105, but I just decided to save myself a little uh, time to do that with the airbrush. So then I added some moot green into the Warpstone Glow, and I repeated this process once again. As I said, the more colors you do and the more intermediate colors, the better the effect looks in the end, because the more realistic it looks, and uh, just it looks better on the eye. So I repeat this process with a one-to-one -one mix of Warpstone Glow and Moot Green, focusing on the orb, and then work my way down the arm to about halfway down the arm now. And then I just did this once again with Moot Green. Um, once again, focusing the orb, working my way upwards the on the orb. As you can see, each step is getting brighter and brighter towards really the center upward part of the orb. And then working my way down the arm, this time to about the elbow. And it's getting a really nice gradient. Now, the thing is with greens is you want to go into the yellow spectrum next because that really makes the brightness pop on this orb. So next I took some Flash Kits Yellow, which is the brightest yellow uh, from the Citadel range, added it into the, into the paintbrush, uh, sort of the airbrush, and then repeated this process once again, doing the orb itself, and then a little bit down the arm. This time I'm, I'm very much near the orb as a cell. The only problem is it kept falling off its base, so I had to tilt it at a slight angle. And then finally with Flash Kits Yellow, just by itself, and uh, this part is just going to be basically focused on the orb itself, just because the orb is the brightest thing. Um, typically, p p people finish off with a white if it's like a blue, or if it's a green, I always finish off with a very bright yellow on the orb itself. That way, it's the brightest object and it is reflecting the light towards the, or making the light go towards the Necron. Hey, and so we're done now. Look at this. We have a nice glowing orb. And we have some OSL. As you can see, there's a nice gradient of colors from the yellow on the orb all the way down to greens, the dark greens. Each step going a little bit further, you know, a little bit away, a little way. And this one's even a little harsh, but it's okay. So you can see I have a bit of green on the body and just work its way outwards. And that's OSL from an orb, basically. It's very bright. You can even go crazier if you wanted to. You can basically cover this entire side of the body. I decided to keep it relatively simple. And of course, just constantly aim overwards and work your way with a bunch of different colors. And at the end, hit the orb with the final color because it's going to be the brightest. You can almost do it white if you wanted to, but it's going to be yellow. But uh, look at that. He is now with his glowing orb. And we are done. So that concludes this week's tutorial. As you can see now, he has a glowing orb on him and he looks pretty cool with his glowing orb. Glowing orb. So that'll be cool. So as I said, start with the darkest color away from the body, like do the orb first and then go away from the body. And with each step, go closer and closer to the light source with the lighter and lighter colors. And the more intermediate colors you bring in, the better. And at the end, hit the model with a nice uh, light color because it is the lightest and brightest source. You can actually do a white in a lot of cases. Just hit it with a white quickly and uh, it'll actually come out really bright as well. And that's essentially it. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Airbrush 101. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if anything else you want me to cover in future episodes. I'll do my best to make sure that every suggestion happens. So as always, thank you Warpheads for subscribing to the Warp. You people are amazing and you deserve this tutorial. So thank you very much. And to the next one, this is Jay saying, happy painting.